invitation. It's If you sing an American song and I sing a tango, yeah. No, I'm not saying to dance because we can entertain people.
Hello. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. Um, the uh, live stream slash live in person is still a work in progress, but I think we got it working. So thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for coming tonight. My name is Alexander. Uh, I am one of the instructors in Type of Cooper, uh, which is presenting today's event. Um, the lectures are part of the Type of Cooper extended and, uh, well, mostly extended, but it's the Type of Cooper family of lectures uh, that we've been doing for, let's see, about 12 years now, something like that. So there's a very, very big archive of lectures that we have going back 12 years. Um, we have about eight years of them filmed. Uh, and they're online. They're in the Vimeo channel that we have specially sort of dedicated to Type of Cooper. Uh, and most of them are also in YouTube. You can find them uh, in there. Just look for Type at Cooper. Um, so I wanted to thank uh, Type Culture for allowing us to film today's lecture and to add it to this amazingly rich archive of lectures. So if you want to see any of the lectures we have in the last eight years, just find us on, on, on Vimeo or YouTube, or just go to the website for Type of Cooper, which is Cooper Type backwards, um, coopertype.org uh, slash lectures. You can go through and look at the past lectures, click on a lecture, and you should have the embedded link in there. So this lecture closes out the summer for the lecture series. We will be back in October. We'll have four more lectures starting in October, and then there'll be another four in the next year, in 2023. Um, but I'm very uh, honored to introduce tonight's presenters, uh, Diego and Gary. So I'll give you a little bit of background on them, and I'll let them take the, the talk forward. So uh, Diego Weinsmann is a design director who runs his own design studio, 40 and 47 Design. Uh, here in New York City. He teaches type uh, bridging image and context for the MFA visual narrative program here at um, uh, school, school of Visual Arts here in the city. Uh, he judges competitions, gives talks, teaches design and branding workshops in Europe, Latin America, and Asia. Uh, Diego was the first Latin president of the Type Directors Club and developed master courses for different audiences. He designed the 25th annual of the TDC 50 competition and was the chairman of TDC 52 competition. He was also a judge in the TDC 68th competition, which is on view across the hall. Um, the, we just closed um, for this event, but the uh, exhibition's open till August 4th, so if you wanted to, to come and catch it, make some time to see it. It's a very, very, very good show, as, as TDC always is. Uh, Diego's also uh, uh, Type Directors Club's Latin American liaison. Uh, he recently published uh, through Kickstarter the book Logo, The Face of Branding, for which he interviewed 40 designers from five continents. Um, with us today is Gary Munch. Uh, Gary has been captured by type and letter forms for years, uh, hence setting in college internalizing the ductile for Latin scripts, picking and clicking in Fontographer and then FontLab. Uh, he still sees type as a device for communication first. For some time, he has been teaching in the wilds of Connecticut's Fairfield County, coaxing others to see how type and text works and looks best. He was on the board of TDC from 2000 uh, all the way until 2008, and he um, made the typeface Candera in collaboration with the Clear Type team at Microsoft. It's on every computer, so you might have seen it, you might have used it. Uh, it's a very, very uh, good typeface in this new realm of new faces Microsoft released. Uh, he's also designed uh, Ergo and Really for Linotype. Without further ado, Diego and Gary, take it away. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. And because we have a lot of stuff to show you, we're going to st start right away with the presentation. In 1985, typesetting was everybody's main tool. Once I graduated from school, these typesetting books became my best friends. These books probably had around 350 to 400 typefaces. And ITC Benguet was always there for me. Two years later, in 1987, the Type Directors Club 
was having the typographic conference of the decade. During those times, we didn't have as many design typography conferences as today, but just a few. We didn't have social media or Google, and this was the only way to meet the participants. I got to meet Adrian Prudiger, Herman Saf, and Ed Ben yet, and that's when it hit me. I realized that there was a face behind the typeface. I attended Ed Bengiat's talk, and I'll never forget when he said, designers should design their own tombstones. 30 years later, teaching took me to Havana in Cuba. I stayed at a family house. My last night there, while I was watching the industrials baseball team, Celia Rosa asked me, what are you doing tomorrow before you leave? I have nothing planned. Why don't you go to the Christopher Columbus Cemetery? I never thought of visiting a cemetery during a free day, and there I went. In the main access of the Colon ne Necropolis in Havana, there is a monumental portal with three arches and Romanesque style. It is taught by a marble sculptural group that represents the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity. Once there, I was blown away by the art. The landscape, the architecture, including the abandoned mausoleums of rich families, most of them away from Cuba since the 60s. All right. This is one of, uh, oh, oh, yeah, not very good with the mic. Um, Diego asked me to comment about all of his, some of the, his slides. Uh, this is a, and this is a sort of an unusual sort of has a potpourri of different type styles. There's uh, a sans serif, and there's a crispy uh, uh, cursive, and then there's a, a mixed face galish. How does that supposed to, to work? And it just, but it works perfectly. It's sort of casual, and everything's sort of mushed together. <clears throat> and so that jaunty little Francisco, that Lopez, and the mix of the, of that, of the L and the I, and the Z and the C. And the acute on the O, where is it? It's, a, it's in there someplace. Yeah, right, nice stuff. This is another one from the Christo, uh, Cristobal Colon. And who would think that you could make an eight out of a, out of a couple of diamonds with a, with, and then drill through the center to make the, the, the counterface? And the one with that triangle flag at the top. And then there's a diamond that reflects the shape of the eight. It's, a, it's astonishing. I don't know if you could do a whole, you could do a whole set. Somebody could, somebody has, somebody will. But here it works so perfectly. It's a little worn, but that's the way stone is. Yes, it's worn down. Ah, the next one here, this is again with a, the, from uh, Kalan. Uh, the, this uh, sarcophagus is turned, and Diego says it's because uh, dengue fever will fill, because of uh, breeds in the water. So it has to be turned over, and then if you have it up, right side up, you can see this like beautiful, uh, pretty cursive in a fashionable mid-century, like 1952, when I learned how to do cursive. Uh, no, no, wait, 62, 70, yeah, 65 maybe. Uh, it's slightly off in the letter spacing, and the links between the letters push and pull the letters off the usual rhythm of what we can think of as a typographic handwriting or careful handwriting. And it seems, though, to me, a rather unusual choice for a tomb uh, so, from uh, Antonio Berufinendita. Mendieta. Men Mendieta. Oh, it's an M. Yeah. Well, that's that crazy cursive. OK. The week of September 14, in 2019, I was planning a trip to London. My friend Vicky told me that I was going to be there right for the London Design Festival. Plenty of activities, special projects, and design everywhere. I couldn't find the words to tell Vicky that my solely intentions were to visit the magnificent seven cemeteries. The Magnificent Seven is an informal term applied to seven large private cemeteries in London. They were established in the 19th century 
to alleviate overcrowding in existing parish burial grounds. Let's go there. Abney Park Cemetery, founded in 1840, is a, a historic parkland. 200,000 people are buried there. Abney was originally laid out as an arboretum with 2,500 varieties of plants. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> this one's a Victorian Gothic uh, lettering on a double monument. So I went to the second one. You went to the second one, sure. <clears throat> Uh, where there is a peculiar sort of thing that's used quite often in, in tombstones in the 1800s, uh, where there, the, there's a capital letter that's uh, based on a, 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 what I think of as a generic uh, Lombardic uh, versal initial or uncial initial. And they, they tend to be based on forms from the Middle Ages. You know, after 800, after uh, the Carolingian uh, uh, Revolution, uh, Renaissance, uh, and here the Joseph uh, Creasley uh, has these these uh, uh, these Gothics mixed in with <coughs> with sans serifs, and the sans serifs cap faces are you know, kind of sturdy, they're sort of blunt, they're very practical, and they contrast with the decorative uncials very nicely. Uh, the dates of the death are in a min minuscule sans serif, or almost entirely ser sans serif. And uh, there are lapidary flares and spurs of some of them. So if you can see on, some, on this, here are the, have I skipped on to, this isn't the same it, one, is yeah. it? Where, uh, this is Dwyer, isn't it? Dyer. This is the one, okay, sorry. I, I, I didn't realize we had we'd taken out that first video. No way, <laughs> sorry. Oh well, my bad. Uh, so anyway, this is sort of a high Gothic revival uh, where metal letters are pressed into, or stuck to the stone, and uh, they have a sort of uh, uh, development, not from the pen, but rather from the drawing style of people during, in the 1800s, when they didn't, they had given up the, the edge pen that we that are made, used to make uh, Gothic writing. You would use a, a flat, broad edge pen. Some of you have probably, no, no doubt, have done this before. Uh, but here, the, the development of the forms are not calligraphic, instead they're typographic and first drawn. So the juxtas of these shapes are rather off, but they have these really special things. They're sort of a, a, a ways of, of finishing that sort of are move away from what they're supposed to be. And then the, the, we have some Lombardic shapes, there's an M in the word march, uh, and then what I find really amusing is that the word, you, does that, uh, is what, what, what word is that? Is it mar, mar, har, 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 har. But it's, it has, we know that it's supposed to be March because it's a date, but is it mar, the R and the C are almost identical. And then if you look at the E, it's the E has the same shape. So they don't, they're, it's not meant for casual reading, but something that you would have to contemplate to, to read it. And then the last line on this uh, as it's here, it says, I can't really tell, it says it's hearts, but it looks like he is. Oh, it's muted. Brompton Cemetery also was founded in 1840. Over 35,000 gravestones and monuments. Right, and this is all engraved on copper, and it's got a high-waisted uh, 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 stylized capital letter. It's not meant for long, long text, but rather uses sort of an, uh, this sort of upper crusty, elitish, posh placement of the crossbar. So everything's sort of up on. Uh, I think it's called in, fa in in women's clothing on pier, where the the waist is really high on the on the body. And this is carried into the Y as well, which is, you know, normally, well, I mean, and it's sort of the typical everyday, it seems to be that the, you don't really want a Y that looks like a martini glass. You don't want it to look like a parfait glass. You want something in between. Here it's a martini glass. There were no martinis back then, though. Uh, but uh, on the compass rows, uh, uh, the, the fine, the very fine horizontals, it's, from the, which is possible with an engraving on metal. Uh, there's an oblique stress in some of the letters, which is really rather unusual for the 19, for the 1800s, because uh, the 
the, the, the fashionable faces were mostly Didot or Bodoni or Bell. Uh, so it's uh, more of almost in back to Baskerville, though with that high-waisted line, it's a, quite a bit different. Is there another one? Oh, isn't this sad? <laughs> it's so sad. I mean, someone made, went to a really, uh, Mr. Sutcliffe, uh, has has lost almost all of his meaning. Uh, one of the problems of uh, slate or even man-made stone is 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 it's 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 layered and and uh, er, uh, it uh, will spoil if, it, if water gets in back of the first layer. And so uh, there are so many commas here, I and mean, it's just everywhere, all all over the place. Um, but somehow it says that his mother is somewhere nearby. His mother, yes, also of his mother, and. Uh, and then you can see that ghosting of the impression of the um, chisel or the whatever made the, the shapes of the letters in the back of that stone, in the back, in the far back layers of, of it, rather ghosting of the, of the name. And it's uh, sort of in an English modern, but again, here in the sense of Didot uh, or Bodoni, as, which would, so I guess we'd be talking about Bell. Uh, with a vertical axis, very high contrast. The, thi the horizontals are very thin, the ver verti verticals are ver rather thicker. <coughs> and the transition, of course, is uh, fairly fast. It's, uh, then Sorry, I moved to the next right. one. Okay. You did? Yes. Oh, I'm on the next one? Yeah. Oh, geez, you got me, <laughs> got me going. Oh, yeah. Okay, and this is a, here's a fanciful sort of inscription in the late Victorian era. And we, uh, it, we have, again, that, that kind of high-waisted, uh, um, uh, look of, of uh, uh, elitist and, and sort of uh, uh, a little bit snooty. I always think of you know, putting your nose up a little bit with that high waistedness. The W, I mean the H, has got two horizontals, so it does both. It sort of plays up, up um, what's that? Upstairs, downstairs. Uh, but uh, then the, the E is a single one. And then all of that lovely little curls of the, on the S, that, that crazy little uh, foxtail of an E, uh, the, the, the little the curved serifs on the E's and the T's on the ends of this, of the, uh, uh, of an, and, and the whole, all of it set into a wall of a tomb or a mausoleum. Are we on to the next? Highgate Cemetery was founded in 1839. Highgate Cemetery is not the oldest or the biggest, but by far the best known and probably the most visited. Marker for William Harry Thornton, 19, 1883 to 1918, who was a classical pianist and played music for the troops in World War I. Mm, this one is a lots of text, and it's a uh, very, uh, again, the, um, Less uh, less contrasty, uh, they're, they're, the thins are, are heftier, a little bit bit more uh, inscribed, a little bit more even to the uh, to the to the shape of the of the letters. Um, that uh, that uh, the the type here was I, I'm, I've been racking my brains and I've been looking through my books, but there was a typeface revived in the 70s that was very much like this, um, uh, the sort of late Victorian. Uh, um, well, even in 28, it would be Edwardian, um, with uh, that it italic. They really wanted you to know who these people were and all of their dates and how old they were. And, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. This, I, I just, this is, a, this is an amazing piece of carving. It, this, this is from the Kindersley um, uh, uh, style. Of, uh, from one of the great uh, stone carving people, uh, uh, companies in, in the world. Uh, that Zafar, Faiz, Duncan, uh, Noman. Uh, the, the, that Z with, that, with the tail that fills that space, that, that just out in this very controlled shape, and then the, but on this real, this wonderfully natural, possibly river tossed boulder and to have his dates there uh, just am amazing uh, amazing another one uh, in uh, uh, in calligraphy this is in Farsi the only reason I can tell it's from far it's in Farsi is it doesn't look like Arabic because uh, there, there are too many there aren't enough 
joins of the letters for Arabic, which tends to have at least three or four. So, f and Farsi ha is being Indo-European or a branch, branch of Indo-European um, uh, adjacent uh, has uh, a lot of consonant clusters and a lot of vowels inside. inside. So the, f the whole la the language is built differently, the con is constructed differently, so it doesn't flow exactly like Arabic does. It's in the Arabic script, but uh, uh, it can be, uh, it has, it tends to have a lot of vertical words, and no, I can't tell you any of what they are, but there are some, uh, all I can tell you what some of the letters are, they don't, I don't start me, but uh, there's a little heart there, isn't that great? So sad. The first and largest of the Magnificent Seven was Kensal Green Cemetery was founded in 1833. Oh, isn't this, you've all seen the Book of Kells, right? And it's sort of uh, the blocks of text in uh, the, uh, the uh, crucifixion pages and uh, um, some of the introductions to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, the books, the, to the Gospels. Um, here, uh, it's a rather chunky uh, stone, of course, in a, Victor Victorian Lombardic verse, although that, that uh, capitals that are based on the unchal fa sh shapes that are very rounded. And then here, sort of back and forth, they sort of move from a mix of, of uh, the rounded to the, uh, to the square. And there's a blend of, of what we would think of as Roman capitals and the uh, unchal shapes of uh, that were the transition from the Roman capitals to the everyday uh, lowercase that we use. So these uncials have this sort of place in, in our thought, in our regards to the past as being sort of very, very past or oriented. And uh, there's a sort of a, a mix in with that. There's sort of a Scotch Roman feeling and uh, it's where the, these really heavy serifs on the, uh, on the horizontals and then here, uh, on this this uh, uh, cross, a very very finely designed again in that sort of uh, full um, dense uh, something you maybe you have seen um, under Milkwood by uh, uh, Sheila Waters uh, calligraphic work. Uh, it reminds me of some of the panels of of that of that her work from that uh, play by uh, Dylan Thomas. Uh, there's there's there. Forms vary from v rather straightforward caps, and there are also some uncials mixed in. Um, there, the A is, has a flat left side, a uh, right side with a, the arch coming over to the to the uh, left, um, and but otherwise just really wonderfully tightly dense and very carefully uh, organized. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, so here's a, one of those uh, those uh, gothics. Right, those black letters, and this one here, uh, it's easier for me to look at it this way. Uh, there's a, 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 a Lombardic up at the top with a P, and another Lombardic initial, uh, the D, um, and sort of, you can see Morse, uh, the word Morse, uh, M. It looks like, you know, uh, uh, but it's not rounded, which of course it would expect it to be. The S is a tough one in Lombardics, I suppose. It, tends to be very wide. Uh, the, uh, there are these sort of dog leg uh, feet on all of the lower, all of the lower case of the, of the, uh, um, uh, of the minims of the domine, D-O-M, the M, the I, and the N, and the I. And you could, you, you, uh, if you can't parse the, the minims, you have to be able to, you have to know where they start and start, start and stop. So anyway, the, it's, a, it's a really, Interesting thing with uh, some some uh, carving, uh, some Rom Romanesque carving at the bottom. I think West Norwood Cemetery was founded in 1837. The cemetery was one of the first Victorian cemeteries to open in London. Ooh, isn't this nice? You sort of this again, this sort of very practical Victorian, very stalwart sturdy, n unemotional, someone's died, I don't, I'm not gonna, no emotion shown. It's very, label this and just be stiff upper lip, right? 
and yet the shapes are so, look at that, C and Alice, the R and Robert with the, with the leg coming off the, the very, very end of the chin, um, the way that they, the, all in, on Ada's there, it's a Febby with a, y, a superscript Y and then 14th is TH, uh, uh, the G I find rather, uh, uh, this is coming, actually coming back, the no bar G, I don't think I like it because it confuses me in small sizes, uh, but it kind of harks back to the origination, original uh, um, uh, forming of the, of the G out of the C just by the adding of one vertical stroke to it. Why do you, that was uh, something for the Gothics, for the uh, Victorians, it was, I don't know. Uh, next. Um, let's see, this one, oh, yeah, this is another, this is all, the names are all in the Lombardic uh, versals or uncials, uh, except for the W and the M. You'd think they would fix the M, I don't know why. Uh, what's interesting, though, probably in terms of the, what we'll see some, in some of these other ones is the way the T is developing in, in this and then in Gilbart. Uh, the T has lost some of its crossbar. And then in the Gothic, in the black letter, the, you've got this dog leg, dog leg, foot, feet, dog's feet on the, vert, on the minims in five and uh, on the E, on the I and the E. They're all sort of rather taller. They aren't the sort of mm, historical uh, written forms that you would expect from the medieval manuscripts. They tend to, they tend to have triang square triangular uh, bait. Things. The Victorians had a thing about legs and feet. They didn't want an ankle, so they didn't want to see, show it. So, but here they kind of do. Banhill Field Cemetery. Since I couldn't go to the Tower Hamlets, which was one of the seventh uh, magnificent seven, I came here instead. It was first used as a burial ground from 1665 until 1854. In 1852, the Burial Act was passed, which enabled grounds to be closed once they became full. This is a really fine piece of uh, slate or sandstone. And of course, it does flake and, and spall in weather and time as the layers separate, as we saw previously. Uh, it's, this is really very typographic. Uh, and it, they're be partly because of the even spacing, the consistent forms, and the long text set flushed to the left, ragged to the right, which is, you know, wow, flush left, rag right, how does that happen? You would think they would have centered it like everyone has pushed the center button. You, you, didn't, you, didn't you find the center button? Um, but it's light and it's a, and a fine light serif Roman. Isn't that beautiful? It, and you can see the, the, the various levels of hierarchy are, are muted. There's a lot going on here. Mr. Cartwright's name is hardly distinguishable from the upper, le, upper text. It's reserved and restrained, and the serifs are cut thin and fine and is in, this neoclassical, in a neoclassical typeface, as you would expect. Something like, uh, something like uh, Bell or perhaps earlier a uh, uh, um, Baskerville. The R, though, has that uh, knee up right leg, so where there is sort of this, this, this fox tail that swoops out, which is just wonderful. We'll see some more in, in, in France when we get into the Dido uh, thing. Oh, I went to the next, went to the next one. one. Here's another Kindersley uh, that by Lin, uh, Lida Cardozo, uh, who is running the, the studio again. This is for a refreshing of uh, the tombstone for, uh, in a uh, English, mode of, uh, pot, you know, um, the English italic, uh, just really a lovely sort of, mm, a little gill, a little bit gill, gill in, in there in some of his, uh, his work, but uh, definitely uh, Kindersley based. Nanhead Cemetery, founded in 1840, is the second largest of the Magnificent Seven. Mm. Right, so uh, it's uh, the ever-loving memory, uh, and wow, the, the partly a part of this is is the the the, the sand the sand serifness, this this the straightforwardness, and of course this is for someone who lost his life in uh, in uh, service. So 
Uh, there's something very direct about it. It's all centered, of course, uh, very formally. Um, the multiple layers of, of hierarchy. Uh, the time has uh, worn some of this. We almost expect it might have had uh, inset letters. You can see on some of the forms these dots, these dots, and indicate that they were um, they were prever pressed in to stuck into the, the the stone. Someone has come along and taken the taken the letters forms. What was clever of them was of and really caring of the of the makers of this was that they carved it first and then they set the letters in so that the stone, even without its metal decoration, could, could survive, the inscription could survive. Isn't this crazy? Uh, wow, time tumbles everything. This is actually built this way, of course, because otherwise the parts, would, the, it would have been broken and, and completely unreadable. Uh, here again, the, the the letters are stuck onto the stuck into on pegs into the into the uh, um, stone into the stone, and then uh, you can. Uh, but very again, very straightforward, very forthright and uh, sensible. Stiff upper lip. I'd like to go back to the cemetery. I'd like to go back to the cemetery's gate, which was which has an inverted torch a purely funerary symbol and likely to be found anywhere but a cemetery. The torch comes in two forms. The most common is the one with the flame burning, suggesting the soul, fire, continues to exist in the next realm. The one without the flame, which simply means life extinguished. Many have more than one symbolic element. Here is the, inv the inverted torch, a whipping, a whipping woman carrying a palm front and some poppy on the side. So for centuries, women have been associated with and played a major part in the funerary process, which might have been one of the reasons for the mourning woman appearing in cemeteries. Women could, could be seen as a forerunner of the winged angels that flew into cemeteries towards the end of the 19th century. Both of them were guardians of the dead, protecting them from, for eternity. Here's a woman paying tribute to a fallen general, general at Montparnasse. A nous les souvenirs à eux l'immortalité, les souvenirs français. The memoirs are ours, immortality is theirs, the French memory. The gates of Montparnasse open in 1824. Mm, wow, Art Nouveau, anybody. It's very loose, very, very free. Famille, uh, Antonine, Frisbal. And uh, right, the uh, breadth, you can see that it's carved, it's not, not um, in, in, a, attached. So, and then gilded, carved with a, 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 a um, uh, U shaped. Uh, Groove so that the light catches on the bottom, uh, and then uh, gilded on the insides, kept up very nicely. Uh, there's templates that, of course, would be used for the L's, um, the A and the M. Very clever. Oh, that's our next. One. Oh, I have the next one. Oh, yeah. No, my partner. Uh, right. So this this really is an interesting one. It sort of reminds of the. Ancient Greeks, when their inscriptions would be just very, very, very plain, very straight, straight lines, nothing really, really different, and, and, and maybe some uh, just pa packed together and very, rather small and very, but very readable. Um, but it's a, it's a Roman inscriptionals, and they, because of the because of the sever the, the seriousness of the nature of the monument here, uh, the the um, use of the V for U, of course, we sort of Hundred, couple hundred years ago, decided that U and V are different sounds and different shapes, and they needed and they had there's one for each. Uh, but the U will can can be replaced with a V and something like this. So un avion prototype. So for uh, for this, it has this sort of uh, um, uh, uh, for that all of its its ancient Greek sensibility in terms of composition. The letter forms themselves are more 
closely finished, like as if they were ancient Roman. And there, there, there is a, a sense of the proportions of small, uh, small squares make up an E, uh, to the two shapes of the E, and then the full square is used for the N. Uh, the uh, V is fills one, fills a a, a full square, and sort of the the e odd and even uh, proportional uh, capitals. And here for the national, for the, not National Geographic, um, uh, this, uh, he went around the world twice, Le Voyage Autour uh, du Monde, uh, the uh, Deuxième Voyage Autour du Monde, uh, the simple serif capitals are rendered with sort of the knobby serifs, it's sort of like that school schoolgirls use, you know, the, the, some of the teachers put little knobs on the ends of their of their capital letters. It was very popular a couple decades ago, uh, and uh, it's it's but it's very charming and it's sort of uh, mm, mm, casual, wanting to be not not trying to be anything overly overly formal, a little naive, perhaps. But still, really quite, quite charming. Charming. I don't use that word very often. I don't know what happened. I, I don't know why I use that word. I'm sorry. I, I, would, I, I always try to find some other word besides charming. I don't know what it is. Père Lachaise was the first garden cemetery as well as the first municipal cemetery in Paris. Wow. So here's an arts and crafts rendering of the legends, about that time anyway. Uh, the family, uh, uh, a motto above, uh, jeunesse, travail, uh, and the family below, famille et stup. And again, here's that replacement of the U with a, with a, uh, a V, a V shape. And then there's a really fantastic ligature of the A and the M over here on, the, on this side. Uh, famille and uh, fitting the O under the, the T, and then, of course, the double L. And there's some com classic uh, classical acanthus ornaments to bind tradition to the new and so modern, although there is a relationship to the sort of playfulness in what we saw with the, in the British, with British blocks of, uh, of that were related to the uh, Book of Kells, a sort of playfulness of how to fit the letters together. And here, back to the Art Nouveau, and uh, post-impressionist, Famille Ernst Caillé, uh, hand-drawn, of course, and uh, you possibly you grouped, it's hard to tell from the, the size, get the, getting the, because it's so, so shiny, uh, the, slanted sli the slanted side of the groove meet at a flat floor and based on the lettering of the, you know, and the dots, I mean, what is it? Why? Why? I, you know, it's a cu it's a very curious thing. What is the insistence of dotting the capital I? Does, why does this happen? I don't know. It's you're not unless you're reading writing Turkish. There's no re reason reason to do that, but people do that. They want to dot their capital I. Uh, and the way that everything fits together, of course, it's rather you know very soft curves uh, in that T. Uh, and then the, uh, the, the, but there's, then there's that very angular S on, uh, on Ernest. So this is in, in of course, is, is Armenian, uh, very tall, thin, not, not typical of what we'd think of a, as a typeface for, for Armenian, but it's quite clear. Uh, the seraphing is rather uh, dupl double, so very traditional. Uh, and then, and all rather close to what is expected of, um, of Armenian. And then down below the the famille uh, Zef, can see that U again. See, there's that. That's not a. It's not a V. It's a U. Kenyonzef. Kenyonzef. So, um, where th I think what the one thing that is strange to, for me is that is the way the K is formed, where the the uh, uh, the the angle of the join of the two arms of the, the arm and the leg of the K is within the stem where it really ought really it is less clotty to join outside of the stem and come into 
uh, either a three-part or a two-part as an angle, so that it, it feels like it's a, it's rather runic when it does the, when it's sh shaped like this. But interestingly, all the letters are angle angular. Montmartre Cemetery opened in 1825, initially known as the Cemetery of the Large Quarries, previously used during the French Revolution as a mass grave. Many cats there. Ooh, this is a this is another um, another monument for war, which is, seems to be a thing. Um, t the columns on the on the on my left, your right, uh, are in the Didot mode, uh, with the wall and the walls are in a square, straight-sided slab serif, uh, side sand serif. There are very minute spur serifs, partly because of the carving technique, and the foremost stone. Uh, curves are restricted, that's the ones down here, the curves are restricted to letters S uh, and C, but they're very small. Uh, in the foreground, uh, um, the designer, there's, give them a, there's a sort of a sense of regimentation, there's sort of a sense of strength, uh, there's no nonsense, everything is very practical, there's no soft curved shapes allowed, it's rather a programmatic design language. Uh, and then steep, the, the, for Polish, uh, steep diacritics for, the, for Joseph, Joseph, and uh, of course the slash on the L is a very nice angle, for, very well done. Um, let's see. Um, and, uh, I went to the next you one. went to the next one. Yes. Thank you. You had to give me. A, you were supposed to kick me under the. You're but you're to too far away. I cannot kick oh, you. you. Oh, that's because. Oh, 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 that better? I, I, I told you to wear shin guards, and uh, you didn't. Yeah, right. Oh, Daphne, isn't this great? Wow, look at this. Isn't that? This is crazy. Crazy. Some crazy person put this together for Daphne. This is really fant fantastic. It's all this sort of loopingness, uh, looping, um, uh, um, enameled. Uh, uh, rod that's been bent into these shapes really, really tightly. And I, I, I'm not a metal, obviously I'm not a metal worker, look at my hands, but can you imagine having to take the, this metal and put it around a mandrel with like, like, and then bending it to, to get the right shape? It's just a, and, and so, so evenly and everything is so perfect and so cleverly done so that it's all held together by the top of the D, the, the stem of the D coming down from uh, the upper left, and then the accent over Daphne. That's what holds it in, that pl in place. That, those two little shapes that just are, have to be there. They, well, maybe the D doesn't have to be there, but the accent has to be there. Very clever. Somebody really put some thought into this. And then painting it in this bright blue. How clever. Lovely. Passy Cemetery opened in 1820. By 1874, the small Passy Cemetery had become the aristocratic necropolis in Paris. Hmm. Ici repose Adelaide Louise de Montmerc, uh, uh, the, the widow of uh, the Le Bas de Clermont, uh, this day are Passy. Um, really very practical, very straightforward, elegant. And this is probably less snooty or, or, um, uh, or what was the word, I, mm, highbrow, but the, it's, it, it, it's very practical. Uh, this uh, it has this sort of fine grained stone and the, the, the letter forms are, while uh, flattened on the C's and the D's, are given it their full, full, their full work, uh, their full curves on the S's, the H quite lovely, lovingly, uh, Higher, oddly, the three is smaller than the five. Isn't that peculiar? Ooh, look at the look at the circumflex over RJ in the on the last line on the A. Ooh, a lowercase e de and le de and um, really very very pleasant. And the next one? Yes. Uh, this is a family marker, isn't it? And so and I, I think it's fascinating about this is that if it were started in 1884 with Julia Gravier-Ney Ebrard uh, and Gabriel Gravier-Ney uh, Fugue, artiste de l'Académie Nationale de Musique. Okay. How do you like that there? You speak very well. Oh, yeah. Uh, 27 ans. She was only 27. What's 27 in French? 27. That's right. You're right. He's right. 
1865 to 1952. How is that possible? Oh, it's only 90 years. Okay, get it. But they're consistently over the over time has been uh, the, the 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 marker. Is, but it, it changes. But it, the style slightly changes. But it's it's maintained very nicely. The intermission. Cal the Calvary Cemetery is the city's smallest and all this. And it opens to the public only twice a year, so if you're planning on going there, you have to make sure that you make it either for same days, November 1st, or the city's Heritage Day, third week in September. In 1980, Italian sculptor Tommaso Gismondi, whose work can be seen at the Vatican, created a bronze door that now serves as the entrance to the cemetery. Mm. This is a great one. This is that, that Dido, uh, this high contrasty uh, for uh, the Deport, uh, the, um, uh, the, the mayor of uh, Montmartre. <coughs> and what I, what, again, I think probably best shown here is the sort of the, the, that foxtail R uh, where that peculiar, I have this thing about R. It's this one. It's one of the best letter. It's, it's the it, it's the it's my letter. I I love R's. You can tell a lot from the R. The way it's formed here. That relationship to the upper left hand corner is so beautifully re, uh, made by the curves, the inner curve on the inner counter and the outer curve on the toe of the of the leg of the R, and it relates to that upper right, right hand corner, just to make a little line across it, and it makes it, and I, and I have so much to talk about, I have so much to say about this, I just love this, this one, this whole thing. Okay, next. Oh, I gotta say some more. Um, here, what, look at that seven, it's just a, a, this long dash, I mean, someone was having a lot of fun with Jean-Andre uh, Vigène Viv, uh, yeah, meal, set, we set, um, song, <sighs> whatever, 43. And they say, they look, oh, look how that, uh, it, again, it, but this is, it's got that um, uh, high contrast, but it's starting to, to uh, flare a little bit. The, the, the terminal stairs are starting to curve. The, the accent aiguille are, are completely curved. They aren't that sort of, um, uh, straight and forward things that we saw in the previous one, which would have made remark about that. The, 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 the mayor had a very nice single line uh, sedilla. Uh, pr pray for her, poor thing. Some cemeteries have amazing views. Calvert has the amazing view of Sacre Coeur de Montmartre. Sao Joao Baptiste in Rio has the Art Deco statue of Christ far in the background. From the Uni Cemetery, the view of the Illimani next to La Paz in Bolivia. And the Cemetery of Paris, of Passy, I'm sorry, has the Eiffel Tower as a neighbor, the wrought iron tower constructed in 1887. Moving into architecture, perhaps the most funerary of all architecture is the Egyptian. After all, almost all architecture in ancient Egypt had something to do with death and the afterlife. It has been widely proposed that the pyramid-shaped tombstone was a means of preventing the devil from reclining on a grave. However, in ancient Egypt, pyramids have long been thought to represent the primordial mount from which the Egyptians believed the earth was created, with the shape of the pyramid representing the descending rays of the sun. Argentinian architect Guillermo Petrocchi told me that if there is a subject, where the architects, principals, and builders let their imagination run wild without t taking into account the stylistic unity is in the mortuary constructions. That is why looking for consistency is a useful, useless task. I'll show you different samples. This is eclectic base with Italian Romanesque influence with unrecognizable aggregates. Ornate Neo-Gothic, Eclectic three stone arches with a broken column above, Spanish Renaissance, stone grotto, a private cemetery showing no design interest, <laughs> eclectic with Visigoth architecture influence, vault fronts like a roadhouse, 
eclectic stack niches with alpine ceiling, big cage with whims of artistic ironwork, vault with North American influence, Nordic ex expressionism, and Chinese architecture. The dog lion is a mythological animal, special guardian of the Lord Buddha. The ball is hollow, a symbol of the emptiness of the mind in Buddhist spiritual beliefs. The Baba Ocean Revolutionary Cemetery is Beijing's ma main resting place for the highest ranking revolutionary heroes and high government officials. Mm. I don't read Chinese, unfortunately. I don't read Han characters for maybe five. Uh, but these are rather nicely carved in granite uh, or a man-made stone, uh, possibly, uh, with a photo. Um, they're grooved into the surface and painted, painted afterwards, uh, dark. Um, there's this, the third and sixth. As you'll see there, you can see there are two of them are different, are slightly different. Um, the, the the brush, the, the stroke is is slightly wider on the uh, third, on the, the sixth, fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the th so someone has come in to actually paint this and then to carve it rather than using a template or a pantograph. Thanks. Right, uh, another calligraphic brush, uh, brush lettering carved into marble and painted. Um, the, the basically, a few characters do show some variation as if handmade and they're very skillfully done. Uh, right from the right first column, uh, third down is different from second right, sixth and fourth right to fourth. I, I can't point them out because then I have to, I don't, I'd have to run over there. Uh, but the photo, the photo engraving is suffering a bit of deterioration in the bow, in the, the, uh, in the blouse. Uh, and then of course there's the red star. And I was very lucky to be there while an artist was doing the engraving of one of the headstones there. The Longjua Martyr Cemetery is a memorial to the fight for communism. From 1928 to 1937, was used as a prison and execution area for Chinese communists. These are the names of their sculptures, soldiers and civilians fighting in the same ditch, liberation construction, and unknown martyrs. Uh, isn't this spectacular? This is definitely hand painted, of course, and then it's not a kinder sleeve, though. Um, although it does have something related to that, the very rather freeform uh, uh, sense of sensibility, starting from the right, running down in a sort of a, a connected uh, script in um, the mo a very loose and very open uh, manner, very lively. Uh, the same, this is here are two, several different styles. You have uh, the same, something similar to the previous, where on our, uh, on your in left, the, the, uh, the, the figures are connected, m multiple characters uh, connected and then broken uh, to the, for the next set, and then on next to it and to the second from the left, uh, horizontals that are very thick and t almost serif, as if they were influenced by Western typography, although uh, their horizontals are heavy, which isn't, hasn't be, didn't become a thing for until maybe ten, five years ago, six years ago, to the, the Italian revival, and then a more typographic version on, on the third from the left. Uh, the others are, a little, are quite different. Well, I suppose that there is a bit of a looser one on the fourth from the left. It's something more like the one from the first down the left. Havana's Chinese Cemetery, opened in the late 1800s and is the oldest cemetery in the Americas. There was once a flourishing, flourishing, oh, sorry, flourishing Chinese community in Cuba, but now there are very few and they are almost forgotten. Mm, so this is rather what I wrote was poignantly mundane. You know, this poor simple brush lettering both expected because it's Han, and it's a Han inscription, and then the unexpected Jose in the Han context, the spontaneous lifts and settings of the brush on the surface are fairly well made. 
thinning and broadening each character stroke. In the Latin characters, they seem to be untutored. They well put attention to the minutia of the necessi necessities of a Han character, the small little ca little twists and turns and the finishings of the terminals. And that then where is the conceptual carryover from that to to the uh, to the to the Latin uh, and the drips on the, uh, the whitewash uh, the drips of the whitewash just really make the whole thing. It, it's so. Bad. We're moving into the animals and their symbolism. The dove is the most frequently animal symbol in the cemetery, a symbol of purity and peace. The dragon represents the highest spiritual power, strength, and supernatural wisdom. It is unusual to see an elephant grazing a tomb. Mostly in Eastern cultures, they are revered as symbols of strength, longevity, prosperity, and happiness. The lion is associated with courage, majesty, and strength. The virtues or, or fidelity, loyalty, vigilance, and watchfulness have long been symbolized by people's best friend, the dog. This one is considered one of the jewels of London, the monument to the bare-natal boxer Thomas Sawyer, 1826-1865. The Dog Cemetery in Paris claims to be the first zoological necropolis in the modern world. It opened in 1899. When we see a carved dog, it is probably homage to a beloved pet. Chuck looks like Times Roman Cyrillic. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being for what you are and will be, good dog. They had to change the name of the cemetery from the dog cemetery to cemetery for dogs and other pets because they buried other animals, including Kiki the monkey. Now in Canada, designated a National Historic Site of Canada, Notre Dame de Neige is the largest cemetery in the country and also the greenest in town. Mm. So taking a break there, uh, the piece of death uh, eternal, uh, with a a, a V groove uh, carving of the letters into the stone, so that the uh, widest part is at uh, facing us, and the thinnest of of the groove, the V, is out is deeper into the stone. Uh, all rather m almost uh, um, monolinear in appearance, except that the uh, um, the, the X, of course, the, the light plays differently on it. All of them very classic forms, but unserifed. The S is rather different, though, of course, it has those flats, uh, rather mechanical, horizontals on the sides. Um, this one's got that Lombardics again. Uh, the D and the E are and the O, maybe the U, but something got, went wrong with the H. There's, it, there's the traditional historical uh, figure would be a, look like an, a lowercase H, but this has got a sort of a, mm, an italic version of, of an H, which sort of uh, makes me a little bit nauseous. I went to the next one. Uh, I don't know why we why we kept this. Why we, why we kept this, uh, George uh, George Gagne. Uh, it's rather elegant. It's refined. Uh, it has a refined Roman inscriptional, very close to the historical models of uh, ancient Roman uh, forms. Uh, the proportions of the letter strokes to the height of the letter, so ten to ten to uh, ten pen widths to the height. Uh, they're light and they're open. Some of the modern, some details are modern. The E has a rather short center bar, so the the center tongue of the back in the in the mouth of the E, uh, the R is attached to the very tip of the, of the head, like a pharaoh's beard, uh, and uh, the N has and without um, and the R without that curve that doesn't relate as closely to the upper left right upper left hand corner, and the N has a lower K, and this is really bad. I mean, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Gagné, but the N has a lower case, a lower right serif on the outside. There's a double serif. Oh. Next one. Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's very dramatic. It's very, very dramatic. Dr dramatic drama that's drama very dramatically. 
and they're very shapely figures. So there's an Art Nouveau uh, plaque above on an, a, a relieving lintel uh, to death, towards death, to the dead, to all of us. Sorrow and grief follow, as must all, to the doors of the end. The door is an obvious partition, symbolizing the transition from one realm to the next. Dying or having a near-death experience is sometimes called going beyond the veil. The veil is a symbol of the passage from one type of existence to another. Veils are meant to protect as well as conceal. I was told that while visiting Zagreb, I had to go to the Mirogor Cemetery. And they were right. It is one of the most beautiful cemeteries in Europe. This is an interesting one. It, it's a uh, obitlie, uh, and, and you and it, you want to say yabo, yabat, but it's not. That's an S, in, because it, the, the only thing it can be, the only letter it can be in Croatia, is an S, a cursive S that's been s stretched out in order to make this sort of loop. It's not a Z, and it has a caron. Uh, on it. So and you can see the Z with the Karen on his first name, on Jelko. Uh, and so it's a Shobo, Shobat, uh, in a sort of a Art Nouveau related. There are some, the LJ ligature uh, is a, a bit of a difficulty, but you can see that the J uh, runs under the L, it works okay here, but of course a J like that in type would be uh, massively uh, collision prone. Next. Mm -hmm. uh, here's uh, Pav Pavicic uh, Tomo, uh, nicely done. It's, uh, it's like a retread from his wife and daughters with a solid granite tire and white marble hub, cool. Uh, lettering in all caps, the Croatian C uh, takes a Karen for CH and or a Q for CH and Z, and it takes a Karen for J. Um, some of the oddities here are the G, which you, I think, I don't know if you can see it quite clearly, it has a, uh, seems to have no serif on the, its upright, and the R with its oversized head and e leg emerging from the stem on uh, uh, down here on the, on the uh, hub. Uh, rather than from the chin of the head. Continuing with famous people, Matisha Lubeck, Croatian spring canoeist, three Olympic gold medals and one silver. William Holbert, 1832-1882, it marks the resting place of the man who founded the National League of Professional Baseball Clubs. Raul Capablanca, the Cuban world chess champion from 1921 to 1927. Painter Edgar de Degas, Jean-Paul Sartre, Nobel Prize Literature, 1964. Simone de Beauvoir, French philosopher. Charles-Pierre Baudelaire, French poet. Oscar Wilde, Irish poet and playwright, with Jim Morrison are the most visited ones. Whoever could that be? Workers of all lands, Karl Marx. A very English rendering of Roman capitals, snugly spaced but not crowded. Ah. Uh. Uh, Guillaume Apollinaire, uh, sort of a modernist, uh, surrealist poet, uh, and the, one, the inventor of um, um, calligrams, poetry that is shaped into, in, or practitioner of it, uh, where is shaped into words. Here, rather, the words are, are shaped onto the, a, a rough uh, granite that's very, but this, that hasn't, has a very natural feel to it, almost as if the shapes of his poetry were the granite, and the words that are on the granite are him. And so really lovely. Next. Uh, here for a musician, a lovely tribute, a carefully cut in classical mode, uh, finely spaced letters with trumpeted serifs, uh, flattened rounds uh, to finish the carving. Uh, a is uh, the A, and you can see it in Elena. Uh, is a little too sh too short for the line. It, 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 its peak wants to rise physically slightly above to the cap height, so as to seem of equal stature. It's one of those illusions that that type designers and uh, 
have to be aware of. Um, the appearance of the letters is of a finishing filler. Something's filled in the, the grooves that have been carved into this and so that it's dark gray on, on the light stone. And the side tags are for representations of the, of the works that uh, Elena Bacci was uh, playing. It's very dignified. Now to some professions. Pierre-Henri Grosse-Colot, French writer, a publisher. Never judge a gray by its cover. That was a bad joke. Um, an industrial typographer. And I'm including this one. It's not a profession, but I wanted to include this brilliant gypsy grave in Montjuic Cemetery. They clearly inherited something of the spirit of the pharaohs. Evita Perón in Recoleta, holding a palm front and eternal fl a flame. Some different cemeteries in Buenos Aires. Right, so here uh, uh, from Buenos Aires, a British cemetery. So, so the sacred is sort of the standard thing on uh, very, rather similar, differently carved, but uh, as, as if there's a template that they use for this. This lovely, this mix of mid-century uh, sans serifs with this sort of, tr you can see that the, 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 somehow the idea of taking the serifs off still hasn't worked its way through the lowercase, and how are we gonna deal with the shapes of the lowercase? Um, they're, they're, so there are still thins and thicks and, and uh, everything has, hasn't been quite uh, uh, finalized. And there's a mix of, uh, so there's a, seems, feels like a mix of serif and sans serif uh, in the native of Liverpool, native of Liverpool, uh, but yet the departed and then the aged, you can see there's a, there a couple of serifs on the Y but not on, on, on the far right, not on this, so rather different. Of course, this on the left, rather more traditional, but same same time period, 862 and 60. Oh yeah, this is Luke. I'm not quite sure how to say that, uh, but it's uh, if if it's German, it's very strange looking, odd. Oh, L O U K. But uh, the Y is rather peculiar. Is a, just in itself is rather odd. It, you, you, you kind of want to see it as a Cyrillic form because that's sort of partly how the Cyrillic uses it. It's very, very odd, very different. Uh, the rest of the letters are rather, rather typical of uh, rather condensed, uh, condensed uh, serif form, a high contrast to serif. Yeah. From the Argentinian crosses, we're going to the Dominican ones. Remembrance. Mm. Right, uh, it's a uh, several strands of imagery f featuring Jesus, and Mary, and Joseph, or Mary, Jesus, and the deceased, uh, at the center of a of an Roman imperial rondel and a wreath, and below is a rather difficult inscription with some naively formed capitals raised from the surface and worn on the edges, and the numerals are especially odd: 1916 for the year and 16 años. And of course, the tilde is mostly bro broken off. Oh no! I mean, I know that about Spanish. I, you got to put that tilde there. And most intriguing is the Arabic inscription on the ribbon that's below the wreath. It's, it, the, the, on the right side, it's fairly clear, the, but the ref, left side fades out in, in uh, crumbling surfaces. Carlos not only takes care of the cemetery, but he told me that after many years, he has learned how to draw the Gothic letters for people who need it for their deceased beloved ones. They have places for sale, innovative architecture. I, I have a hard time with this because I can't figure out how, many, how this, was out, this was made. Is it, is it concrete with incised letters or impressed in, in a casting? It's just very curious. I think it's, maybe it's the scale that that's throwing me off of it. And there's so much text. Uh, it's on the surface and it's cons typographically consistent. There are no obvious forms that are in, in variance. But that text, the overall texture, how does it, is it atta attached? When I zoomed in on it, it looks like it's grooved. I don't know. I don't know either. I should. I guess we're supposed to, though. We'll study it for next class. Oh, yeah, okay. I, maybe I will. Well, what we have is an open book. 
and the open book is a fairly common symbol found on gravestones. The motif can represent the book of life with the names of the just register on its pages, a book with a soccer ball next to it, a book on top of a broken column. The broken column is a symbol for the end of life and more specifically, life cut short. Here we have the broken columns and the wrapped urn. The, drap the draped urn is the most common 19th century funerary symbol. Like I mentioned before, a symbol of the veil between earth and the heavens. The top of the tree is broken, referring to the person's life cut short, like the one of the column. And now to Ecuador. This is an uh, odd pairing. They're both very modern. They're, there's a sort of a, uh, a uh, more typographic on the, on the right. The one on the left is made of, a st of, again, channeled letters. Remember Daphne, the same sort of process here using uh, metal bars and bent around a, a very here a very small mandrel. Uh, the letters on the right are carved as if they were from a model more here a model from uh, mid-century, early mid-century, 30s, maybe maybe Futura, but not from the S. Uh, something else. There's a couple of, and, but not so recent as avant-garde, uh, as opposed to the the letter forms on this on the left that are made in the square uh, square um, square lines and uh, very small single sized curves. Oh, <laughs> it's really spectacular, this mausoleum where the, the, the black layer. Was that the same guy that Carlos? He's doing yeah, all that. Yeah, wow, he's really good. Uh, and uh, he's got it all right. And then and it's all correct and pro proper. Right. And now we're on to this one. But then, then uh, it all looks really well done. But then someone was off, like the calligrapher just was not there today. <laughs> and poor Jose Luis Asensio, um, I, I, you know, I guess he's still waiting. It's been, what, what, seven years now? I mean, it's kind of... Uh, and then everyone else is... But, but they did somebody else after Jose. Yeah, they did the guy be yeah. Below. Juan Marti, yeah. uh, is that a T? Tarnell? And you know that Jose, I just realized, is the same name of the guy in the Cuban uh, Chinese that you were talking, oh, he was with the He hand. really gets around. Yeah, Jose's around. So let's next move it. Ecuador. The cross represents the crucifixion and the resurrections of Jesus Christ. With regard to its use on headstones, grave markers, and memorials, the cross most likely symbolizes that the deceased was a Christian as well as his or her hope of new life in heaven. Jerusalem. Wow, the Her Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I'll have to bring that up here. Uh, yeah, this is a, a close-up of a mosaic. That's a, it's obviously a restoration or a, uh, a modern version. The interesting thing about mosaic, of course, is that it's all pixelated. It's just pixels, square pixels, or it's shaped pixels sometimes. Quite often they're shaped. You can see some of the triangular nature of it. Uh, so there's a lot better, the, the color you know, is a lot more um, refined than in the originals where the number, the, the, we, can, we can now in the modern day make more colors of blue and make them consistently. So you can say, yeah, I want a light middle blue and I want a light dark blue or a light, a dark middle blue and get, get that when you order your, your, your chips. But here at the bottom, in, in a uh, Gr Greek uncial, uh, it's Greek, it's all Greek to me, but you can see a couple of common, uh, common letter forms. On the first, let the last letter of the first word is an O-U ligature, uh, very common in, in, in word ending in, in Greek. 
Uh, if I had more time and didn't have my head twisted, I'd probably have, uh, be able to read it more clearly. And you can see, of course, the 1990 date of the entire and the entirety. Some other l letters that are kind of different from the modern times is the, the delta, which is like, looks like an A after ACE, 1990, ACE, uh, dozan, to, uh, kusere, ze, um, uh, the M is rather unusual, and of course, as a capital letter, we don't usually see the W-shaped uh, ome omega. The mosaic follows the abstractive nature of Byzantine art. And now to Mexico. Cinco de Febrero Cemetery, where there are 6,000 tombs. Ooh. So this is, a very f this is this freely repainted. It, it's uh, been filled back, uh, carved and then filled back in. An early 1900 style sort of, sort of relating to someone's recollection or, or familiarity with post-impressionism and Art Nouveau. Uh, filtered by distance, and the A and the M and the the e, the E P D down below on the on the uh, uh, it means something. Do you know what it means? E P D. En paz descanse, repose oh, in peace. Oh, that's in Spanish, isn't but it? E, yeah. No kidding. Oh, of course, of course it yeah, is. Yes, in Mexico. It's not in Latin then. Yeah. Right. I went to the next one. Ah, this is definitely in the Art, in the art Nouveau uh, post-impressionist, like the Toulouse-Lautrec uh, monument uh, poster, uh, not in a monument not to Jean Avril, but of course to, here he is again, Jose, uh, freely drawn and carved into a, surfix, into a surface. I don't know that it's really onyx or, or a, 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 an effect from uh, an enamel and darkened. The 1800, 1800s had a habit of putting a period at the end of lines everywhere, and it's carrying through to, the, to this one as well. Now the sad section, the section of children. It reads there, you could be a bird, a flower, or a star, and what's erased probably reads, uh, but you were an angel. The inscription is in a vernacular hand. Of course, there is a luchador action figure there, there are other action figures. Oh yeah, and here's that gothic again. Let me come sing up this one. And it's rather carefully done. And it's in, the, it's in, Mex in Mexico, right? Yeah. But they just the, they they there's so much black letter. There was like a a, 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 a it's a place where it never went away. Uh, so very traditional. Uh, there's some modern touches. That's of the terminals flicks of the baseline ends of the R, the, uh, where it flicks back up of the N, the R, and the A, and especially on the L, uh, which is almost fully calligraphic. There, and there's a little bit of retouching on some of it, and re, where repainting, which is, and then calligraphy is not really thought to be calligraphic, uh, but or double stroking, which becomes, once you do that, you're starting to letter. And this, of course, is lettering rather than just being calligraphic. Uh, a ca it's calligraphically based, but not not. But it, it is now lettering, and it leads, unfortunately, to some heavy forms in the D, the O, and the E, where they, the in, the counters are uh, left a bit small. Uh, I mean, of course, then if you c if uh, black letter isn't your thing, you can have uh, um, what what used to be called grote uh, gro um, uh, gothic in was a term in English typography, uh, American typography actually, uh, for something that's very sans serif. So you can have this sort of, now you can have this sort of so black letter sans serif with straight lines, straight block letters that built, to get built up from one. And there's that Vendo that had that exact same sort of style in where we, we, you saw, we saw the uh, guy who was selling the plot. Oh uh, yeah. Right, right does the same thing. In cemeteries, cherubs usually denote the grave of a baby or a child. 
their favorite toys, clothes. Families are convinced that their deceased children will go to heaven. What is really surprising is that they no longer do it from the hand of an angel or the virgin herself, but from Mickey Mouse. Now in Nicaragua. Well, so 1934, that's uh, very much at the end of the Art Nouveau, we're moving into Art Deco, and so there's a little bit of a simplification of that, of this, but again, still, that ins there's a hint of the Lombardic Brussels in that, uh, in uh, Congregation uh, de Hermanas Josefinas, uh, where the C and the J are uh, um, uh, traditional, uh, more ornamented uh, capital letters. Mary and Jesus. La Pieta. We're going to Peru now. get this one. You Where's my far. note? I went too far? Yeah. I'm just tapping there. my little key, yeah. key here. Right, so there's like multiple ligatures here. I mean, by God, ligatures. L-L-E S-A L-I-N A-S C-O S-S Guillermo Salinas Cosio. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so it's, it's sort of an art deco nature to it, but it's sort of moving into this modernist approach of, to, of uh, tradition. Uh, it's almost entirely sans serif. Uh, the, the, only the G has a, has a, a serif at the tops of their uh, um, curves. Um, there are there's a superfluous dots on the capital I's again, uh, but it almost makes it seem rather whimsical. Uh, in the date, the ligated letters in DE is adventure, rather adventuresome. Uh, Aristides Walter Cerbero Camacho, uh, a classically inspired uh, marble carving, and it's a freehand drawing with uh, mixed treatment, hovers between Gothicizing, breaking curves on in S and the O, where it swoops and doesn't bounce, bounces down, with a mix of mid-century serif uh, sans serif and serif numerals, 1995, 1951, uh, nine and 25, 1952. There's sort of this mix. The right legs of the R, of course, R flourish. The sort of deep dips down below the baseline, and the eyes are dotted, even though they're capitals. Um, here, am I supposed to do this one? It's a fetus. Yeah. Oh. I get to do un feto, which I'm told is a fetus. It's very sad, I guess. Why don't, uh, this very simple mid, middle, medium weight sans serif letters routed out of stone in a sort of a U groove so that the dip into the back of the stone is, is uh, a, a valley, a, not a V shape, but rather U shape, squared off at the ends of the strokes. And the tricky diagonal of the N uh, uh, is uh, lighter and so less deep to maintain the overall distribution of stroke to background. Um, otherwise, and this happens in typography as well, type, uh, the, the sometimes the, you have to make an adjustment to the strokes with. The E has the rather uh, short middle bar uh, favored by the 1800s and early 1900 type and lettering as well. The reflection of angels. Angels represent the connection between heaven and earth, as well as strength, peace, faith, protection, and beauty. Angels can help families feel at ease after a loss, knowing that their loved ones are forever protected. An angel carrying a person, this represents the angel carrying the departed soul to heaven. Group of angels on a cloud, this pose, this pose symbolizes heaven. The next example is of an angel holding a torch. The lit torch symbolizes life. The torch is also seen as an instrument that illuminates the darkness representing enlightenment. 
symbolic to the day of judgment and a call to the resurrection, an angel blowing a trumpet, also known as the Angel Moroni, has long been used throughout the years as a memorial sculpture. The hand with the finger pointing upwards is a commonly found motif. It indicates the soul traveling to heaven. Angel of Grief, 1894 by American sculptor William Story, soon became a popular everlasting expression of mourning the loss of a loved one. The angel wings symbolize love, spirituality, and protection. Now we're in Spain. Mm, right. Uh, geometry is a start for a lot of letter forms. The predominant shapes are circular and triangular. Of course, there's the square. Here, the C and the D and the O are circulars with a shift of the, of the inner counter towards the right, so that it leaves the left hand, the left side of the letter thicker. You can see in the O, the shift has occurred on the interior. It works with the C and the G, but does it really work with the, with the, with the O? Um, so the weighting is, is heavy on the left and right. It, also, it sort of disrupts the pattern of the, the, the tight, the, the spacing. You can see that the V and the A, especially the A with that curl, uh, is, is, seems to be rather tightly paired, uh, rather tight too tightly, and although overall what's happening here is that the spacing is done, we call it spacing, there's a reason we call it spacing rather than distancing. We use the area between the letters rather than the distance between extremities of the letters to space letters, to, to add the space, you have room, air between them. I, I okay. oh, oh, this too? Yes, hmm. hold on. Huh? No. Uh, this is a sparkling white marble, rather, t rather typical. I mean, it, it's carved into a f with a full flat groove without sloping sides, uh, very, very flat, pushed into the stone. The forms are Roman inscriptional, so the R is more of an early 20th century version, although it does relate to Morris Fuller Benton's version of. Um, um, what is it called? No, I just, oh, it'll come back to me. Cloister old style. Uh, this form reverses the 1800s penchant for the curly R, the, the fox, fox, uh, foxtail, uh, the didos of an Egyptians and Scotch uh, type faces where the leg is apparently vertical but exits the chin at the head of the curve and makes the baseline more like a walk going back to that. Uh, it seems like here the U is a bit now. Might have used a V and been able to kern on the, over the A. Uh, the M has high interior peaks to match the N, but then puts the A, but then that puts the A seemingly too low. Uh, it is actually about right. It's just that the the M is too high, a bit high. Ah, uh, two. Uh, in the center of Beaux Arts, central uh, high relief of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, uh, Mary and Mary surrounded by puti and clouds. The inscriptions are curiously flat on those on the flanks. It's almost as if they're they're posters. Uh, they're picked out of the surface, so the letter of the forms are raised away from the background. They're not inscribed into the, the surface, and they're like broad, bold, as large as possible, no sentiment, subtlety or sentimental frills, overall rather like wood-type forms made into stone. Letters uh, are, are sans serif, and save for the RIP, which is a reverse weight Italian at slab service serif. The texts are dense and tightly packed uh, and uh, tightly spaced and lettered, leaded. Uh, so much so that the tilde de enye, which is on, I can't tell from here, tilde de, de enye, Third land. Uh, Vanyo, yeah. uh, is uh, reduced to a single bar, which is clever, uh, like a macron. Uh, it's polished there. Would be now that Gary mentioned Jesus, here's something interesting. It doesn't happen 100 percent of, of the times, but it happens quite often. When we take a look at the monumental urban cemeteries and their architectural and sculptural works, we often take a look at Jesus' image. 
at the magnificent realistic art that was created, even when the image is repeated from the same template. Then we go to a local popular cemetery where you could notice a different kind of vibe, where the images are created by the local artist. And you could notice right away the ethnicity of every place. Now we're going back to Spain. We are in Spain. Oh, wow, my goodness, I was quite a ways. Uh, oh, I know what's coming up, oh boy. Uh, Santa, uh, there's a little bit. So here, uh, Yamo, uh, which is that uh, Art Nouveau style aging, moving into uh, uh, deco. Uh, the right legs of the A and the M swoop down below the baseline and throughout the E is like an ancient Greek sigma variant um, uh, in the lowercase. The double the L ligature in Yamo is clever, although we haven't we've seen it before, so it seems to be a, a thing for many people. Next. Now you're done, Chris. Oh, okay, so go ahead. Something you need to do. No, 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 that's right. Okay, I'll skip this one. What, Central Cemetery? No, you're in Europe, I guess. You kept like a lot. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, sorry, my, my bad. Um, again, the, uh, that uh, transitional uh, uh, from Art Nouveau to uh, the uh, Deco. Uh, these are some adventuresome letters in of the manner of the late 1800s. Uh, it's an, a bit of a, a Japoneseism, I think, just that sort of a way of um, trying to imitate uh, brush stroking, uh, the fascination of Europe for works in East Asia. Right, here's a collection of markers from a wide uh, time frame uh, from left to right, freely organized in Art Nouveau. Similarly, but more restrained, a sober, elegant stone in the mid-late 1900s, uh, minimalist style, the Familia Fabregas uh, Gila Vega. Uh, another set of Art Nouveau, although less elaborate than the first. Uh, most are raised forms, which is a little more difficult to make and not carved into, but up raised above the surface of the form. You have to take away more stone than, it does, than you do when you carve out the, only the letters. So leaving the letters behind is more difficult, uh, possibly done in, in artificial stone, a couple of them. Uh, the dark gray middle, uh, minimalist stone is traditional in size lettering uh, into what looks like granite. The next one is a uh, fresh mix of uh, a varied Art Nouveau stylings uh, at top. The alpha and omega, alpha and omega on the top, have the ba same base shape, so it has a sort of horseshoe shape uh, arc above, and then the A alpha gets the uh, another arc below with and there are flaring serifs at the baseline. The alpha have an, has another arc on its, as its crossbar. Then an announcement in fanciful toulouse lautrecian Moulin Rouge freehand letters followed by a short line of, uh, ob of uh, uh, the oblique. Uh, uh, the plus few are rather more sober, though not much so, so a set of uh, capitals that have standard serif placements. But what serifs, they're so, they flow out of the bars and stems into axe-shaped wedges rather than into sober uh, terminals, inverting the serifs of the, as if inverting the, ser the serifs of the terminals on the alpha and omega uh, on above. Uh, then the treatment fail falls a bit flat on the wor word viuda uh, or widow. It is cramped, so the exuberance of the rest is tamped down. Uh, one can imagine a more style consistent A. It has that arc, that that arc rather than have, so there's no opportunity to reverse the curve of the, of the shape. This one for uh, the Familia Simo, uh, each of the letters is lovely, uh, but together their differences are noticeable. The O is tragically narrow from the monumentality of the Roman inscriptional majuscules, and the S 
is rather too wide, uh, though subtly sinuous. The awkward combination of RAV is uh, too tight at AV, but what to do about with the oversized heads of the R's and their legs, so they have to descend. Uh, they, need, they perhaps needed more space or another round at the drawing board. Uh, this is uh, applied in, or molded into the wall. The f these forms show the handcrafting of each form used to make the, the figure. Uh, it's just uh, none are the same, and though they share some qualities, S is a bit awkward in it with its thinning diagonal spine. It's, it's S typically will have a, is thicker through the, its, its descending shape, uh, thin at the top, thin at the bottom, thick at the middle. And the many Ds are oddly weighted to favor the rounds. The rounded, the stem of the D is, uh, the, the flat part of the D is, is thin and the round is reversed. Yes, it's, you do want to give a little bit more to the, to the curve because it's partly because of the weighting of it. Uh, but it's a good setting overall. But there are some bizarre, some odd uh, hyphenations, todo, uh, uh, todo pode rosso, Creador, cre, creador, del. They're, they're I, <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven. Ah, and that's what that is. Uh, here, the uh, machine age is upon us, and geometry is going to rule. Uh, it seems to possibly be from, uh, from or carved from slate or from a metal mold. I, I hard to tell from the, what the, the uh, sur surface is. Uh, it has clever li ligatures and much reduced forms, and the, uh, although the N is rather unhelpful, I think you can see it there. Oh, this is the best. Oh, this is, ju this is just a thin, this is just the best one. I, I'm, I'm so glad you took this picture. This is, this is like, this one is less like, I, I, can't, I can't get over this. This is from Galicia. And Galicia, and I just, you know, I, it, 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 it's a, a completely spectacular, fresh take on the tired old Lombardic versals. That's all it is. It's just Lombardic versals, and someone has come to give this a, a new life, and this is in Uruguay, far from, from Galicia, which is in the uh, northwestern Ibe um, Iberian Peninsula. So, uh, it's playful, it's, uh, it's lively, it's unrestrained, and it, it mixes historical forms and invented developments into a decoding thriller. It's, for the most part, the forms are really easy to figure. N-E-S-A-R-N-G, really pretty, pretty straightforward with a couple of puzzles. Uh, the core structure is antique, and the rendering is modern. It looks like something right off an, an L.A. overpass. It's just spectacular. It's delightful, the delightful misdirections on R and N, uh, sort of, and the coordination of C and G, and the ancient union, again, of V and U, and tut, tut, tu, tu. You all, you can see that the T, right? The third, the fourth word letter in is a T. It doesn't look like a T. You really have to look at that to see a T. If you have to understand, you have to realize that it, you have to, if you know the language, of course, it must flow from it. But it, without the Lombardic shape just doing this, a cur one bar and then a curved base, it would never have been possible. I just think this is just spectacular. Next. Oh, uh, uh, do we have to stop? Oh, Might not want to pick any attached. This is one thing about those attached metal uh, 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 things is that very often they will weather and they'll drop off. And here there's a trace of weathering left where the U was in Arcellus. Uh, and then, of course, it, it, this steel probably just rusting away uh, in rather standard Art Deco letters in Broadway style, although the A has its heavy stroke on the wrong side. It should be on the right. Want to say what the rest of it? No, I'm okay. okay. Well, what Gary say weather, that it was because of the weather, uh, he put it in nice words because it's a lot of vandalism in most of the cemeteries in Latin America. What, you know, people might still 
many different things from elements, many different places. And what they do is sometimes they, they uh, melt the material and they, bur and they sell it by the pound. So that's what's happening besides other things, correct? Like when they start taking bodies for, doctor, for medical students and things like that. Okay, of course, weather has something to do. And even nature intervenes. They say that if someone dies and is buried, a tree grows from their grave that symbolizes the life they had. So this guy had like a mango tree in the Dominican Republic or a cactus in Buenos Aires or the different things growing. Erosion also affects the gravestones. Now we're here in the United States Oh, there it is. Um, this is an early 1800s stones, uh, often uh, had a, a mixture of uh, lettering styles. Of course, this is, um, they tried to stay up to date on the fashions, and, and the, you can see the uh, whatever, but whatever was at hand, the styles were, were uh, and, and used, uh, carved and cast or for the text. Um, from the top, a sturdy, uh, high contrast vertical axis serif face. Uh, with thin, thin strengthened to avoid fragile raised forms. Another high con contrast design uh, with uh, extremely fine serifs and uh, note the anonymously high crossbar of the F. Um, wife you, is the, the crossbar of the wife, and uh, you can see just the very minute, the very tiny spur of the crossbar on the word of. Uh, and at center, a reverse weighted high contrast Italian design. Uh, the popularity of reversed weight, heavy horizontals or thinner verticals uh, led to the ubiquitous American Wild West posters of the, of the 1800s. Um, and then finally, the companion italic of the main inscription. Long head serifs on the tall stems, pot hook serifs on the short stems, and right hand terminals. The overall impression in one today is one of quaintly historical design elements mashed together. And it's in its day, this was up to date, in the mode, modern, and cutting edge. Uh, and a double monument with a, with a complicated tale. Uh, the deceased are the offspring of, da, of Mr. D.S. Brown and Ms. Ms. Uh, B.W. Chu, and neither have the purported father's surname which seems unimaginable, unimaginable at the time and possibly scandalous, but it seems uh, the five-year-old uh, infant Margaret was first to die, so had her own monument. Then young David at 75. In style, the monument is Edwardian, sober if flashy. The Gothic black letter is so light and open it approaches the color of white letter, uh, the density of white letter. Uh, the lower registers are slightly more skilled. Uh, the spacing and angles are re fairly regular. Capitals are adequate, Lombardic uncials stripped of their excesses of ornament going back to their original purpose as uh, noting. Uh, only the D and B uh, seem out of place and being too angular for Lombardics. Mags, dates are uh, fine ser and serifs. Do I have to read all these? Or no. Are they long? All right. Well. I could. I mean, I, there's a lot to, to, yeah. to take in. Let's go to the next one. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Uh, this is a Celtic cross uh, with a Romanesque vine support. The inscription is in a fine Roman capital, and the A has a medieval form. The rest are pretty straightforward. Uh, the R has a curved leg uh, with a series of uh, the series of, of horizontal serifs on horizontal spokes of E, L, and T are exaggerated trumpets swelling from the stems. Uh, uh, rather than towards the stroke ends. This is the, yeah. yeah. Uh, lichen uh, obscures the small in inscription above the pointing fist of the, on this 1800 stone. On the cartouche with the name holds bold angular forms. The curves of uh, all the rounded later letters are sort of colle collegiated where they're cut on angles uh, like in, in, in 
very sporty. Um, especially special are the super serif forms of the last line visible here, dyed in a, in a light clarendon with nearly even weighted strokes and with an extra short unserved center bar in E. Hands are found on many gravestones. A hand with the index finger pointing up typically indicates that the deceased soul has risen up to heaven. While a hand with four finger pointing down represents God reaching down for the soul. The sun serves as a metaphor for an everlasting life. Hands that appear to be shaking are usually a symbol of matrimony. One of the sleeves should appear feminine and the other masculine. If the sleeves appear to be gender neutral, the hands could represent a heavenly welcome or an earthly farewell. There are many books, many stories, many poems written about life and death. I picked one of my favorites. The poem is a translation of M. Paz. Ame fui amado. El sol acarició mi faz. Vida, nada me debes. Vida, estamos en paz. That is part of life. How do we want to remember our beloved ones is up to us. From La Chamita Cemetery in La Paz to the monumental cemetery in Milano, these past two images remind me of something that I read. Pale death enters the huts of the poor as well as the palaces of, the, of kings. Or another quote outside the packed cemetery's wall, here pride dies and, equal, and equality is born. In 1987, Ed Bengiat was telling us to design our own grave headstone. Patrick Caulfield followed his advice. C'est la vie in French. Translated into English, it's life. But wait, the letter V in V looks like a capital D in die. This is how typographically close life Close is life to death. Thank you for coming or watching from your home. That's for the next talk. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think we have time for questions, correct? Do we have uh, Okay, okay. Unless there are questions, I would just said them. Yeah, I don't have any questions. We wish. <laughs> we were talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let us know. Noted. How long did you take to visit all these To do what? To visit. To visit. I started visiting these cemeteries in 2016. It's over. 85 cemeteries and more than 22,000 photographs. Wow. And out of the 22,000 photographs, we, also, we only showed you 340 today. <laughs> I was expecting to do a 10 hour talk <laughs> today <laughs> for at least to show a thousand, but Cara didn't allow me. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Thank you for coming.